call this on. Uh, morning, everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, well, morning, everyone in Finland and uh, afternoon to the participants in China. Uh, welcome to the machinery industry in China webinar today, uh, which is co-organized by the Regional Council of South Karelia, uh, Business Finland, Finnish Business Council in Shanghai, as well as Virma Lappeenranta. Uh, my name is Ding Ma, uh, Senior Advisor at the Regional Council here. And since we have limited time, I would kindly suggest that uh, the tour de table will be done in the messaging sector. So if you wish to introduce yourself, uh, please type in the messaging sector to all of us. Thank you. This webinar is initiated by the South Karelia Asian Knowledge Hub project, which is founded by the European Regional Development Fund. Uh, South Karelia region is located in the eastern border of Finland. Uh, one of the 18, 18 regions in Finland uh, and South Karelia shares over 1,000 kilometer borderline with the neighboring country, Russia. The region is especially known as a European cluster for forestry industry, power paper, and the university also is ranked as one of the most innovative research university in Europe. South Karelia's vision is to be profiled as a pioneer in Finland Asian cooperation and one of the most appealing research development and innovation environments for Asian partners and this is what we are striving for to achieve in the near future and actually it feels really good to have you guys join us both from China and Finland I believe the ongoing global pandemic has given us the true chance to take the leap with digitalization and digital way of working. The use of Teams and other online conference platform has been very active lately. Hopefully some of the practicalities will also stay as a new normal and compensate some of our carbon footprint as well in the future. Well, besides the digitalization for the industries, the meaning of globalization in all aspects in the value chain has been lived through. I think from the access to raw materials, spare parts to the market and end customers, we have all been affected and challenged. The green shorts of economic recovery gives us a great timing actually to dive deeper into the understanding of opportunities of China's machinery industry for Finnish companies today. With this short introduction, we will get into today's topic. And we have speakers from both Beijing and Shanghai, public and private sectors. Firstly, I will give floor to Mrs. Grace Wang, Trade Commissioner Business Finland in China, who will talk about doing businesses in China. Grace, the floor is yours, please. Thank you, Ding. Uh, good morning and good, er, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's really great honor to e meet you uh, here today. Uh, my name is Grace Wang. I'm the Trade Commissioner for Business Finland uh, based in Beijing. Today, I'm going to cover four main topics in my presentation. Uh, I'll start from business trends in China. Following uh, that, I'm going to give you two company cases to show what typical issues Finnish companies uh, uh, may have in the market like China. Then I'm going to give uh, top three recommendations uh, to the companies who are interested in coming to China. And before I finish, uh, I'm going to talk about what services Business Finland provides to Finnish companies globally. You may have learned that many of the business opportunities in China are driven by government and policies. Um, this is nothing new to the whole world. Therefore, it is crucial for the companies to understand what the government is focusing on now and also in the future. In recent years, uh, Chinese government has described several major new measures on the future opening up and each has certain business implications, especially to the Finnish companies. 
Uh, I'm going to focus on the number one and two, uh, especially on the uh, opening up and also on the late, late uh, two sessions of the meetings. So in the financial sector, uh, the People's Bank of China unveiled policy details as well as uh, a timeline that focus on expanding market access and lifting ownership restrictions. Besides, foreign banks are allowed to set up branches and subsidiaries, financial leasing and auto leasing welcome foreign participation. We see this very, very important for the Finnish companies, not, for, not only for the Finnish uh, digital innovation companies, but especially for those companies uh, who need uh, leasing, financial leasing as an important tool for selling the machineries in the market like China. On the manufacturing side, China uh, still have some restrictions, such as automobiles, uh, ships and aircrafts, etc. But these industries are also in a position to be uh, opened up, especially in automobiles industry. Though the ownership restriction may uh, be lifted in a few years time, uh, but global brands will be able to invest in the Chinese market uh, uh, in the joint venture uh, mode or even uh, just bring your own new uh, models or your technologies. So if you are in the supply chain of machineries, this definitely brings uh, more opportunities for you to consider maybe having uh, one uh, way of getting your business done in the market of China. Uh, we all know, of course, that uh, import has been always one of the focuses of the Chinese government. And you may heard of the uh, China International Import uh, uh, Expo, which has continuously been two years time in the past a couple of years. And now uh, it's going to be the third time in China in November. So regarding import, China has started to lower import tariffs for quite several products, uh, uh, including automobiles. Some of this started already in the year 2018. To be uh, more competitive, a lot of the uh, manufacturers uh, will need to enhance their capabilities uh, with new technologies so that uh, they have higher production capability and also uh, they need to help to reduce pollution for the whole society and the whole world. Uh, most importantly, uh, the government will also expedite China's accession to the WTO agreement on government procurement. This means that foreign companies will have more opportunities to take part in Chinese government procurement projects. We have seen a lot of the Finnish companies who are here in China. Uh, they may have experienced uh, uh, in especially uh, the bidding projects in China that they are forced of having a Chinese entity to be their partner. This is going to be changed and actually this is changing now. For those uh, company and those of you uh, know China very well that each year in early March, there is the world famous event in Beijing called Lianghui in Chinese. Uh, in English, it means the two sessions of the meeting where uh, the party members gather together summarizing the past and make decisions about future development. The signals from these meetings have been always the most important business implications. So a lot of the companies, both Chinese and foreign embassies, media agencies, and etc., will study this very carefully. This year, due to the coronavirus, uh, these meetings uh, were held at the end of May, so not too long time ago. And the four most important takeaways for businesses from these meetings are uh, number one, we see that the government has highlighted the people related sectors, for example, employment, job security, uh, eliminating uh, poverty, reducing pollution, food and energy security, etc. This is, of course, uh, very much driven by the current situation of worldwide, the, the, the coronavirus. In quarter one, China's economy was 6.8% uh, down. And so strong government response was actually expected from the two sessions of meeting. But eventually, not very much were material, uh, materialized uh, during the meeting. Government at all levels in China now are focused on the uh, new infrastructure investments, which is uh, 
very strong uh, domestic investment to stimulate uh, now the economy to grow or to recover. Many of the Finnish companies uh, whom we have talked with uh, also are expecting to benefit from some of these projects. And some of the Finnish companies here in China, they're feeling that uh, the government procurement projects are more transparent compared to the earlier years uh, in the market. And number two takeaway is focuses on investment. So I mentioned already just now that uh, both domestic and also foreign. So there's nothing new that China is trying to attract still more uh, foreign investment coming to the market. And uh, uh, the new infrastructure project that I just now mentioned, uh, which is a uh, report uh, in the media like 4.9 trillion US dollar in total, um, probably this will be uh, implemented uh, in the coming few years time. So definitely this is a, a very attractive business opportunity to many uh, businesses around the world. Number three takeaway is a stable industrial supply chain. Uh, no doubt on this because the supply chain was uh, seriously hit by the coronavirus. And plus the lately China-US trade tension. So we see the world is changing from uh, globalization to be more regional focused. So the supply chains are more localized and diversified, just enabled to, to get enough uh, supply timely. This should be also a, a right timing, we feel, for those companies in the sector to consider where you should uh, um, be uh, to continue your supply to your customers uh, in the market. For example, if uh, the Finnish companies uh, of whole goods uh, machine are in China, and they would rely on you to provide uh, uh, the components and spare parts. Now, uh, it is the right time for you to consider whether you need also to move uh, to be located to close to your customer, just enable to be flexible with the supply. And number four uh, takeaways are the government aims to further improve the, uh, the efficiency. I don't talk about more about this point, but of course there are more uh, points uh, that will benefit businesses, uh, but definitely this is a one that uh, uh, which means a lot of the processes within the governments at different levels here in China will be uh, further simplified. And like uh, the business uh, uh, certificates, uh, business license registration and tax and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, all of this will make doing business in China comparatively easier uh, than in the past. We talked shortly about uh, the import and the CIIE is one thing and each year uh, there has been uh, very much in terms of dollar generated from the uh, China International Import Expo. Um, for Finland, uh, continuously in the past two years time, we've had country pavilion uh, during the CIIE where we see that uh, it's very important for Finland and Finnish companies and businesses to gain uh, media exposure because uh, uh, this is very much a government driven uh, event in China that focus purely on buying things uh, from worldwide. So uh, almost all of the medias uh, in China and uh, in the globe, they are there uh, to do the even sometimes live broadcasting to the whole world. Um, definitely, there are always challenges and problems uh, in terms of uh, doing business in China. We have heard a lot about uh, that my products have been copied in China. So the IPR uh, is one of the issue. Though we see that uh, overall, uh, the market in China is trying to be more legislative. There are uh, new regulations, new laws uh, every year uh, being released. But still that uh, IPR um, is an issue. Uh, it has been largely improved uh, in the past uh, a few years time. Uh, but still that uh, we would highly recommend that the Finnish companies uh, to be very, very careful uh, when you bring your new technologies and your machines uh, to the market of China. But this doesn't mean that you should be scared or you should be afraid of. Just be careful. You talk with relevant legal consultant. You talk with, uh, you can talk also with us. 
uh, so that you are well prepared before you come to the market uh, of China. Follow that, I'm going to give you uh, two real company cases uh, that I'm not going to mention of the company name. Uh, the number one case is actually related to IPR, that uh, it's a fin medium-sized Finnish company uh, that they are world leader in one specific sector. sector. Their products are sold to many countries in the world, and they started to do business uh, in China already uh, 20 years ago through a Finnish trade company. Um, but somehow the export to China was fairly small uh, due to various reasons until a couple of years ago when the Chinese government released a new policy. And this has stimulated uh, the demands uh, from the market here in China. Just when they feel that this is the opportunity of getting profits, benefits from China, they found that uh, there are uh, over 500 uh, private Chinese companies, many of them are very, very tiny ones uh, located in the towns, uh, in the villages, uh, for example, in Shandong province, copied their uh, product. So we talked with the company and to cut it short that eventually what we found is that the company has nothing registered in China, uh, not their uh, brand name, uh, not their uh, product's uh, outer appearance, uh, not their technologies, not their uh, unique designs, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So nothing, completely nothing. And we just wanted to highlight here that uh, China is still uh, a unique market where a lot of things that has been uh, registered in within the European Union or in the uh, North American markets, uh, it does not apply uh, to the Chinese market. So something needs to be registered in China before even you come to the market just to get yourself better prepared. Uh, we do have very good uh, legal and IPR related uh, uh, agencies that closely work together with us. So if you need to uh, get more relevant information, you could contact us so we could easily connect you with the relevant parties. Uh, the second case I'm going to uh, explain to you is about decision making. Um, it's very complicated for especially a lot of the uh, big projects in China uh, because uh, uh, many situations uh, there are multi decision makers. So here is the example. It's very large Finnish company and they're actually in the marine uh, tech uh, sector. They have been trying to uh, come to the market and they found a very uh, big project, uh, several millions of euros project, and they have been working on that uh, from the company side, uh, uh, their CEO, their technical per people and et cetera. A lot of people have traveled uh, many times uh, to China and they have agreement signed with their Chinese partner who is also a comparatively large company based in Shanghai. So they even have like uh, the tender document, uh, uh, all the technical specific specifications were more or less written around their uh, technology or their products. So everything seems that uh, they must be the only one who would be successful in this tender. But eventually when the tender was uh, uh, opened in a way, uh, they lost to a German company. And they were extremely angry, of course. They tried to even sue the Chinese buyer. They feel that they have been unfairly treated. There has been some dirty discussions under table going on, et cetera, et cetera, which are very natural. But they contacted us and we eventually understood that uh, uh, the person who have actually changed uh, all of the decision almost at the last minute is uh, an executive of uh, sitting in Beijing. This Beijing company is the mother company of their uh, partner in Shanghai. And so this definitely means that uh, uh, there are many other decision makers. And we talk with the Finnish company that have you been to Beijing meeting the mother company, meeting anybody from the mother organization? And unfortunately not. Uh, they know there is a mother company but they believe that if they could supply the best technical thing, if their uh, technologies suits the best of this tender, then they would be uh, the most ideal kind of supplier. 
So they are wrong, of course. I gave you here one example of uh, uh, smart energy is one of the sector that we business Finland focus here in China uh, to promote for the Finnish companies. Here, you don't have to look into the details just to tell you that uh, in the energy sector, uh, there are minimum five different uh, uh, sectoral uh, decision makers in terms of policy, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, the industry expats, in terms of uh, even sometimes the media may have uh, influence also in terms of associations or research institute. So our job here in China, when we are helping the Finnish companies uh, is to um, help the company not only understand about the market, but also understand who are the key stakeholders for your sector of industry of businesses uh, in the market. Uh, as a conclusion of these simple uh, cases, uh, I'd like to give you three recommendations when you are considering of coming to the market of China, do your homework thoroughly, meaning that get yourself ready. Not only just get your technology, your product, your people ready, but also from the legal side, how you can better prepare yourself uh, so that uh, your products are not copied, your uh, partners will not cheat you, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we have wide connections uh, with different uh, experts, so um, if you could contact us, definitely we would connect you with. Uh, uh, people who have different expertise to make to help you also get ready. Number two is uh, uh, in doing business in China, we emphasize of guanxi, which means uh, relationships in English. So find the right people work for you. These people may be your own employees, but at the early stage, you may not need uh, your own employees. So they could be also your Chinese partners. But you need to find the right one who have the relationship, the connections within the industry. They would just provide you a lot of the shortcut uh, to connect you with the real potentials. And uh, number three is uh, be fast and also be persistent with new opportunities. Um, one of our business Finland team's uh, uh, job is to identify business opportunities and sales leads and get them published on the uh, uh, market opportunity web page there. All of the Finnish companies should be able to see those uh, business opportunities. And we found very often that the Finnish companies are very, very slow in terms of uh, responding to the new opportunities that we have identified. So in a market like China, where things may change very, very rapidly, uh, we really need to be fast, fast of catching the opportunities, fast of making decisions. But of course, at the same time, when doing business in China, we need to uh, be persistent. We need the SISU spirit from Finland, meaning that uh, uh, once you are determined of coming to the market of China, don't give up easily. There may be a lot of problems. There may be a lot of challenges, um, but uh, be, being persistent is one of also the important uh, features. Uh, my last topic of today is uh, uh, what we do, Business Finland, to help the Finnish company. So we have uh, more than 40 offices around the world, and we have also our own focuses in terms of different industry sectors. These are the ones that Finland is leading definitely in the world, and also these are the ones that are most demanded in the market uh, uh, like China. And then based on the uh, selected focuses, so we have set up different uh, program teams so as to better help uh, the Finnish companies. For example, the sustainable manufacturing would be a team that could benefit uh, uh, you who are joining uh, this sector because uh, uh, the mining, uh, the pulp and paper uh, machineries are definitely uh, one of the key uh, sector within the sustainable, sustainable manufacturing. And we here have dedicated experts and people working on that. Business Finland, we have uh, overall four uh, type of uh, uh, functions. Number one is the export, which is very easy to understand. So we bring you or we help you to be connected uh, with uh, the China market. And to get this done, 
I mentioned a couple of uh, uh, already way of working like the business opportunity and etc. But also we have uh, uh, government platforms uh, built between Finland and China. And these are extremely important. So with the support from the government, especially from the Chinese government side, it sometimes can make your entry into the market like China comparatively easier. Uh, we have also uh, the travel side. So we, we attract uh, uh, tourists from all over the world uh, uh, to come to Finland. Uh, we have also invest in, in Finland team uh, that who try to get uh, the money coming to the Finland. So if you need uh, help in getting investment from China or from any other country, so uh, please also contact us. We have dedicated person to do this. Uh, and then uh, we have also in innovation collaboration. This especially uh, helps the Finnish company in terms of funding. Uh, we have joint fundings with uh, not only overall Ministry of Science and Technology here in China, but especially with uh, Zhejiang and Jiangsu, two provinces. So the Chinese side and Finnish side, we put money together and jointly fund uh, those companies uh, who wants to come to the China market with uh, advanced technology solutions. So um, time is limited, and this is uh, all of the four topics that I'm covering today. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome to contact us uh, at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. And uh, for the better flow of the webinar, uh, you can write your question to Grace in the messaging sector and I believe Grace will answer you during the webinar and you can also ask them live uh, in the end of the webinar during the Q&A sessions. Thank you Grace and I think that was a great takeaways three points do your homework find the right people and rapid decision making and that will be a good start for you to explore and conquer the Chinese market. And don't forget that Business Finland is the best partner in the public sector, which will guide you in your journey. Next, we will have speaker from China Paper and Pulp Industry Chamber of Commerce. Secretary General Mr. Zhang Shenjing will talk about China's paper machinery industry outlook before and after COVID-19. And uh, Mr. Zhang will be speaking in Chinese and we will have Oliver Zhou from Business Finland, uh, Beijing's office who will interpret for us. So uh, Mr. Zhang and Oliver, please. Okay, 大家好. 我是中华全国工程业联合会的联合会职业商会的秘书长张胜金大家好呃 my name is Zhang Shenjing. Uh, I am the general secretary of the China Paper and Pulp Industry Chamber of Commerce. 尊敬的各位芬兰机械行业的同行们，大家上午好。呃，各位伙伴的 dear Friends and colleagues from the Finnish machinery industry. Uh,在全球共同抗击新冠肺炎疫情的特殊时刻，我代表职业商会向芬兰机械行业的同行们致以诚挚的问候，向异地以来给予中国作者行业支持的机械行业的同行们表示衷心的感谢。At uh, this exceptional moment, when the world community community is fighting together against novel Virus. Please allow me to um, be on, on behalf of the CPICC, China Paper Industry Chamber of Commerce, to express my sincere greetings to the, um, to the dear friend from the Finnish machinery industry, and also uh, express my deep gratitude to some of you who provided and uh, great support to China Paper Industry. 根据主办方的安排，我向大家介绍一下新冠疫情前后中国造纸行业的情况，共分六个方面的问题，希望大家对疫情下中国造纸行业的情况有一个大概的了解。Uh, 
Um, I'm very honored to be invited uh, by Business Finland to share uh, some general information uh, regarding the China paper industries. I will share you. Uh, I will be sharing you uh, with those with the following seven uh, topics. 呃，第一部分是中国造纸行业的基本情况。中国造纸行业目前统计在册的企业有两千七百家，两千六百家，以民营造纸企业为主，主要的产品有文化纸、包装纸、生活用纸和其他特种纸等，分别占总产量的百分之二十四点二五、百分之六十点五二、百分之九点三四和百分之五点九。The first topic uh, is concerning the general information regarding China paper industry. Um, so far, we have uh, totally 2,600 paper and pulp related, related registered enterprises in China, uh, mainly uh, private uh, companies. The products include the culture paper, uh, packaging and wrapping paper, household paper and the other special purpose paper, respectively uh, taking um, about 24%, uh, 60%, percent, 9% and uh, about 6% uh, respectively uh, in this uh, market share. 中国造纸产品以国内消费为主。六百二十五万吨，增长百分之零点四八，出口六百八十六万吨，增长百分之十一。And of course, nowadays Chinese products, paper products, is still aiming at domestic market. But of course, with the globalization, globalized supply chain, the raw material, and also the market, and the China paper import export has been increasing. Recently, for example, in last year 2019, uh, importing about two uh, about 6.25 million tons, increasing by uh, 0.48%, and exporting uh, 6.86 million tons, increasing by 11%. China paper 废纸占原料总量的百分之五十七，木浆占百分之三十七，飞木浆占百分之六。中国传统的麦草浆的数量越来越少，木浆和废纸的废纸大量依赖进口，这是中国造纸行业的原造纸行业原料结构的特点。尤其是中国进口木浆占全球商品间的三分之一还多，而且仍然呈不断增长的趋势。Uh, the raw material resources of China paper making are from mainly from waste paper, pump paper, non-pump paper. Among them, the waste paper takes about 57%, and pump paper about 37%, and non-pump paper only 6%. And the traditional Chinese traditional uh, uh, the raw material we call the straw pump now is becoming uh, less and less. So the China raw material is very much depending on the on, on, on the import, especially the pump paper and also the waste paper. This is one of the features of the Chinese raw material structure. You know, uh, China import and the pump uh, import takes about one third of the uh, uh, glo global pump trading and is still growing up uh, rapidly. 呃，二零一七年以来，中国以每年百分之三十的数量减少进口废纸。到今年底，中国将全部停止废纸进口，废纸原料缺口将达到两千五百万吨。而且，中国国内废纸由于长期循环使用，质量不断下降，这对当下中国造纸行业是一个重大的考验。呃、uh, ，since 2017, according to the Chinese policy, China would reduce annually 30%. The import of the waste paper. By the end of this year, 2020, China will totally stop uh, importing waste paper, which will make uh, the gap or shortage of about 25 million tons of waste paper. And uh, in the domestic domestic market, because the Chinese domestic uh, waste paper will have to be recycled from time to time, the quality will become uh, uh, lower and lower. So. 
that will be the, the main challenge uh, for the China paper making uh, industry. Uh, 2019年中国造纸成为全球第一大国之后 和欧美地区人均200多公斤的消费量仍有较大的差距。也可以这样说,就从长期看,中国造纸需求量和质量上仍有较大的发展潜力。Uh, the topic, second topic I want to share you some features of China paper industry. Um, first of all, that China industry, paper industry have experienced two phases, uh, from the rapid uh, growth to be the stable uh, growth uh, phases. In uh, 2010, uh, the growth rate of China paper making industry is with the same pace of the China GDP growth, even sometimes higher than the GDP growth rate. In 2009, China, uh, the paper market became the, the, the biggest market in the world uh, and, uh, and uh, growing by 3% annually. In 2019, the Chinese output of the, of the, of the paper products reached 1.125 million tons, increasing by 3.5%. And it is now that uh, but still, uh, the Chinese uh, cons consumption per capita is, is eight, 80, kilo, kilo, uh, 80 kilogram, and a big distance from the Europe and American uh, uh, 200 kilogram per capita. That is to say, China is still the potential uh, paper uh, market in the world. Uh,第二个特点是中国造纸行业的集中度不再不断提高。呃,中国造纸企业百分之九十以上呢是十万吨以下的,呃,造纸企业产量呢主要集中在前三十家。目前中国产量最大的造纸企业九龙纸业年产
已经得到了大部分中国企业的认可。Uh, the paper、okay. uh, market、uh, fostered also the、uh, paper making machine.、Uh, paper making machine is uh, 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 increasing.、Uh, at the moment, the China old medium sized paper machine was speed of about one thousand meter per per minute, and also the weighs about five meters, as well as the tissue machine packaging、uh, paper machine and also pumping system have been recognized widely by Chinese enterprises. 呃，中国产的造纸生产线不仅质量和呃稳定性达到企业的要求，更重要的是具有明显的价格优势。呃，其次呢，关键关键设备方面也有一定的突破。当然呢，在中国，大型造纸企业仍然以进口纸机为主。呃，同时呢，这个在中小型企业，以及包装纸机、卫生纸机领域，中国产的造纸装备的所所占的比例比较高。Of course, China made uh, 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 paper making machines has、uh, got a good reputation in terms of quality and also stability. Stability, and of course, the price is very competitive. And uh, uh, of course, that some large scale、uh, paper、uh, paper machine、uh, paper mills still uh, import uh, the machine make uh, uh, machinery from abroad. At the same time, the small medium、uh, enterprises.、Um, Mainly the packaging paper and also the household paper mills. They are using mainly the local made products,、uh, local made equipment. 呃，第三个第三部分是中国的疫情和宏观经济情况。呃，中国经疫情呢，经过两个多月的严峻的考验，目前已基本得到全面的控制，经济社会生活各方面已经基本恢复正常。从四月份开始啊，全国工业企业复工复产率达到百分之九十以上，尤其是造纸企业复工复产率已经达到百分之百。但是呢，全球疫情的快速发展使中国外贸出口受到重创，国内需求啊也严重不足，宏观经济也受到巨大的冲击。一季度中国 GDP 同比下降百分之六点八。五月份以来，随着疫情防控措施的调整，学校开始复课，商业活动开始，商业活动开放，工业增加值，出口开始小幅增长。经济下降幅度开始减少，呃，但经济正常回归，回归正常状态，仍然需要到第三或第四季度。And I would like to say something about the pandemic and also the uh the impact on China's economy, especially the paper industry. Uh, uh, since the, the beginning of this year, China has already experienced the two、uh, very severe, severe uh, pandemic uh, uh, how to say the,、uh, the impact. To China, in China,、uh, until now,、uh, basically everything has been controlled.、Um, economy and society, and also the normal life has been、uh, returning to the normal. From beginning of the, uh, uh, April, the work resumption rate has reached 90 percent, over 90 percent. Especially the paper、uh, paper enterprises, almost 100 percent of the factories. Have returned to normal work, and of course, because of the global pandemic outbreak, the Chinese export has been heavily hammered、uh, by the pandem pandemic. And、uh, in quarter one, the GDP growth rate has been uh, 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 decreased by 6.8 percent、uh, on the year last year's base. And of course, from beginning of May, because of the uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the schools ha has been reopened, and also the business has been opened, and the industries、uh, growth、uh, is 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 increasing, and also export has uh, uh, recovered. So we are predicting that in、uh, quarter three or quarter four,、uh, the Chinese economy will be returned to the normal level. 呃，第四部分是疫情对中国造纸行业的影响。呃，毫无疑问，疫情导致全球面临经济大萧条的危险，国际需求锐减，中国宏观经济失速，多重压力啊，对造纸行业发展也带来了巨大的冲击。Being no doubt,、uh, the pandemic of of course heavily heavily hammered global economy, and also we are facing the risk of the economy recession, and also international needs is decreasing. And China will face also the the speed loss of the micro economy. Those multi factors will heavily impact 
on paper making uh, paper industry in China. Uh, 今年一到四月份，全行业完成造纸产量三千五百二十三万吨，同比下降百分之八点一三。同时呢，市场需求下滑严重，尤其是外贸外，尤其受外贸出口下滑影响，包装纸需求大幅下降。学校停课，商业服务，服务业，呃，导致，呃，商业服务业停滞，导致文化纸需求下降，大部分造纸企业不得不再次停产，限产。四到五月份，一些造纸企业开机率不足百分之五十。呃 ，from January to April， 嗯、um, ，the paper output is only three， 呃 ，thirty-five million tons。Year on year decreased by 8.13 percent. At the same time, the goals of the、uh, export、uh, decreasing, the packaging papers needs is decreasing too. Regarding the cultural paper, because of the school、uh, stopped and also the、uh, shopping and,、uh, and the commercial businesses stop,、uh, has been、uh, have been stopped, so the needs is sufficient. So most of the paper. Uh, and the mills has to be stopped, and also all the limited production. If in April and and May some of the paper mills,、uh, the workload is less than fifty percent. 呃，第五部分啊，呃，被疫情改变的和没有改变的。疫情在短时间内对行业造中国造纸行业造成需求造成大的影响，较大的影响。但从长期看，中国造纸行业仍将保持稳定增长的态势。对企业生产经营和行业发展不会有实质性的影响。同时，行业每遇到一次困难，都使行业格局得了一次优化。行业集中度将会继续提高，一些规模小的落后的产能将不能继续维持。行业集中度提高后，市场秩序也将继续规范，大企业的作用将会越来越突出。And、uh, number five topic, uh, change or unchange, uh, from the pandemic. Uh, of course, the pand pandemic in the short term will impact the paper industry. But if we are looking at long term, Chinese paper industry will keep stability. There will there will be no、uh, dramatic change、uh, to the enterprises' operation and also、uh, production. Of course, we say that uh, uh, the risk means opportunities. So in the future, some、uh, small scales and also the Uh, Small-scale enterprises will、uh, will not be、uh, successful in the market, and the big market, the big enterprises will、uh, be playing more and more important roles in the market. 呃，最后我再对芬兰机械行业的同行、啊、提一些建议。呃，当前呢，疫情还在对全球经济产生深度影响，但中国已经开启，已经开始全面启动恢复经济工作。经济恢复工作，这体现了中国政府对经济所具有的绝对的影响力。目前看，中国不但是全球经济恢复最快的国家，而且中国仍然是全球产业链最完整、规模最大的工业制造国家。中国市场仍然是全球最集中、最大、最具增长增长力、潜力的市场。这是中国，这是中国造纸行业和造纸机械行业发展的基础，也是中国造纸行业的信心。Raise up advices to the Finnish machine making uh, industry uh, friends and colleagues.、Uh, while the、uh, most of countries are still fighting against、uh, coronavirus, China has been、uh, activated economic, uh, uh, how to say, the recovering work. That means the Chinese、uh, central government has、uh, absolute、uh, power to control the. Uh, Microeconomy in China. So、uh, at present, China is the、uh, fastest、uh, recovering economy in the world, and also、uh, China has uh, uh, very completed、uh, supply chain and also the largest manufacturing capacity、uh, in the world.、Uh, so、uh, China is still、uh, very confident in the in the market、uh, recovering, especially as well as the paper. Industry,、uh, we are very confident in paper industry、uh, in China. 
呃，在此呢，我对机械行芬兰机械行业的同行们提以下建议，仅供参考。呃，第一，要继续中中国的，那嗯 ，please。OK， 呃呃 ，last。Uh, but not least, that I would like to uh, uh, give you some advice for our uh, Finnish counterparts. Uh, 第一，要继续重视中中国造纸市场。中国造纸市场是全球造纸行业唯一的、最大的继续增长的市场。二呢，二第二是，虽然中国造纸产能增长慢了下来，但是企业新上企业新上项目也在减少，但中国造纸行业转型升级仍在继续，企业会不断的对。装备进行技术改造和优化升级，这是装备行业巨大的机会。OK。呃 ，the first, please still pay more attention to China paper market. China paper market is the only market in the world which is still growing in the world. The second, even though the China paper making、uh, industry is slow. Is slowing down the steps, and also the new projects has、uh, pending has been pending、uh, are pending, but the upgrading of China paper making is still、uh, continued. That means the Chinese、uh, paper industry、uh, paper enterprises will continue upgrading equipment and technology, that will bring the big business opportunities.、Uh, For the for the for the enterprises. 呃，三第三，中国的中国造纸行业在环保、生物质技术、新产品开发方面仍然存在短板，需要更多的创新产品和技术。第四，装备领域的服务市场是下一步造纸装备制造行业的新领域。呃，近几年来，在做好项目新项目的同时，唯美德、福伊特、安德里斯等企业都在把服务作为企业的新的增长点。Okay.、Uh, the third was that uh, um, the Chinese paper industry is still、um, looking forward to some、uh, high technology in terms of the environmental、uh, protection and the biomass technology and also the new products. That means that China paper industry enterprises still needs more cooperation with the international. Uh, brands like uh, like uh, Volumet, like Void, and Andrews, and the third and fourth one is the service industry is increasing very rapidly. That will bring the value added added value to the industry. 呃，第五个建议是，目前中国大企业或一些中小型企业新上项目的激情啊和和动力仍然很大。呃，特别是今年以来啊，疫情影响下，中国造纸行业的投资啊，呃，没有下降，没有减少，反而在在增长。我想这也是中国造纸装备、中国造纸装备业和全球造纸装备业机械行业的一个一个一个一个新的机会。And the fifth point that I would like to to say that the Chinese large scale paper enterprises are still very motivated and still passionate. To invest the new project, especially、um, this year, even though the、uh, impact of the pandemic, but investment on China paper industry is still increasing. 呃，以上简单的介绍和建议啊，仅供各位同行参考，如有不当之处啊，敬请谅解。再次感谢芬兰机械装备行业对中国造纸行业的支持，谢谢大家。Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, sir. The time is running so quick, like didn't notice. But uh, uh, that's just my uh, only uh, the advice and just for your information. And uh, we could, uh, I, I welcome your comments. And、uh, thanks again,、uh, Finnish、uh, machinery paper industry. Thank you for your support for China paper industry. Thank you. Thank you, Zhang Mishuang. Thank you, Secretary General Zhang and、uh, Oliver for the professional interpretation as well. We got a very comprehensive outlook of the industry as well as got some recommendation for our Finnish companies.、Uh, due to the time limits,、uh, we will continue. And uh, next uh, will be uh, the turn of 
uh, Mr. Liu Jingwei, Vice President Marketing and Communications, Valmet Paper Technology China, who will be talking about Valmet's successful story and challenges in China. Mr. Liu, the floor is yours, please. Okay, thanks. And uh, I have some PPT prepared and I try to share that. Let me know when you see that. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see it. So I put that into the full screen. So it tried to make that more clear. So which screen you see that? Uh, Barmer's successful story and challenges in China teams meeting. I, think I mean, that the, right the full yes. screen or just the... Uh... Uh, full screen, yes. Okay, good, very good. So thanks a lot to that uh, in the Finland for the invitation. And also thanks to uh, Dean for this organizing this meeting. And also thanks a lot for everyone's attention to this topic. So I was asked to share that uh, one minute successful story and uh, what we are doing for the challenges in China market. So let's firstly go into that short introduction about myself. So my name is Liu Jingwei. So you can find my contact information from here. And uh, I put my email, mobile phone number here. Of course, welcome you to question me if you have that later on. And also, you can also find that WeChat number here. And about myself, I have over 20 years uh, working in the pulp paper energy business in Asia, Pacific area, and China, and more than 12 years uh, working as a management positions and worked in the, the different uh, responsibilities from engineering, sales, marketing, communications, and the customer relationship management and the key account management, as well as the strategic business development. So I have the engineer background and also I have the diploma of that EMB from the Rutgers School, New Jersey State University, USA. So firstly, I want to share you that how Vomit successfully uh, doing the business globally. So you can find that Vomit have over 200 years, 220 years like the history in this industry. So if we look at back, so mainly we can see that, you know, three faces. Before hello. 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 Are you, can you hear me? Yes, I hear, hear you. Here is Simo Salminen from Karilan Konepaja Konserni. Okay. Yes, hi Simo, we will continue with the presentation. Welcome to join okay. us. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I continue. So you can find that before 1990s, Vamit as mainly the, how to say, like the uh, regional players, mainly in the West countries or European market. And from 1990s, Vamit that time merged together with Roma and then created new name is Meso. And uh, during that 1990, uh, until that 2013, so that time Vomit and uh, also Roma covered the business from the pulp paper energy and also mining constructions and also automations. But the World changed very fast until the 2008, another finance crisis coming. And then, so how to be agile to successfully do the business in the globally? So we take another strategy is demerge. So you can find merge and demerge is 
a strategy change according to the market change. After 2013, vomit become a new vomit and mainly focus on the pulp, paper, and energy business. So during the last uh, six to seven years, Vomit was very successfully and got very fast growth in that all the booking and the net sales and as well as the profitabilities. So until the end of last year, Vomit got good all the receipt from a 2 billion to 4 billion. So, you know, just after the merge is about 2 billion, but last year, end of last year is 4 billion. Profitability also almost triple compared to the before. So this is globally how Vomit takes the different strategy in the different market environment. Now let's look at how Vomit strategy in the different phase in China market. When it comes to China, as a lot of uh, small companies doing business at the beginning, they start as a uh, trading. So you know that in 1933, when it delivered the first paper machine to old China, is a Guangzhou paper. So close to 90 years serve to China market if we calculate from that point. So we can see that before the China take the open door policy, that time Vomit mainly doing business in China is trading. But after that, you can find that during that uh, last 20 years of last century, Vomit takes new strategy is local presence. By set up the joint venture in Vamit Xian, set up the office in Beijing, set up office in Shanghai. So it's trying to strengthen that as a presence in China. So after 2000, the new century come and the China pop and paper industry go into the emerging market. So very fast growing, when they take very rapid actions to localization of its services and production. So several services center and also logistic center set up during this period. So after that uh, 2012, the new vomit come in. What kind of strategy should be taken? So vomit in China take a new strategy is competence localization. So during this period, so vomit strengthen a lot for that people's competence development and strengthening. Since pop and the paper industry in China market from the emerging market going to that maturing market. But we notice that clean energy, industrial internet, artificial intelligence become booming. So Vomit put more focus on in these areas. If we look at these pictures, you can find that this is just like the history in the different phase, how Vomit is doing the business. From the delivery machinery until the localization of the competence. This slide, I want to tell you that how Vomit is doing the business, close to customer. So this is a very important 
Of course, localization normally also you need to think about where to have your location. And when you look at the China pop and the paper industry, mainly focus on in three areas or regions. One is Yellow River Delta in this area. Another one is Yang River Delta. And the third one is Pearl River, Pearl River Delta. Market is here. Customer also are here. So Vomit set up its locations also close to customer. Now Vomit have over 1,800 employees in China. In China yearly, we have around 5 million, 500 million euros production or <laughs> income. And we have different functions in China and that's serving customer very well. We talk about the most important is competence localization. Here, uh, this new vomit period in China areas, we see that better local people, better vomit in China. So we try to get talent, and also we need to think about how to develop talent. And also we try to happy, get all the employees happy and engaged to the company. So you can find we have different training and people development programs. So this really have everybody feel they are like the belongings, belongings of the company. People become more innovative. So, of course, in China, we also facing that new challenges, like I just mentioned, pop and paper market is becoming from that emerging market to the maturing market. And also other like the booming area are coming. So that's the reason when new vomit come up, vomit level make this forward way to way forward this one pager to talk about vomit mission, vision, strategy, master one, values, and mega trend. Most important I want to highlight is Vomit strategy. Vomit as a company focus on the pulp and paper and then extend more and more to the bio energy and then to that environmental solutions and also continue to that to the new industry like the maroon. So that strategy is extended. But we focus on still that how to convert the renewable resources into the sustainable results. We target it to be that global champion in serving our customer. So how to get that, get to there? So it's our must win and growth accelerators. So we put customer still as the number one importance for us. And then, of course, Vomit take the most important strategy is take the leading role in the technology and the innovation. We care people. We always try to get a lean in the process. And then we strengthen that services as just Mr. Zhang Shenjian mentioned that services give us a stable profitability and also business. 
but how to continue growth that the, the services? So we take that field services as one area to give us more muscle. And then we also take that industrial internet digitalization as a big trend. We know that we, how we serve our customer in this area will give us the future. So this is the VAMIT's way forward. But in China, most important, how we localize that. So means that first we align this strategy and we localize the action needed and we continue this growth accelerator tactics. So time is very limited. I just uh, try to summarize what I try to share with our entrepreneur from uh, Finland. You may know a lot of vomit, but if we talk about vomit successful story and way for the challenge in China, I would like to see is a correct strategy with a different localization in different phase. And close to your customer. So thanks a lot for your attention. Feel free to give me question and also you can contact me. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Liu. And thank you also for sharing your personal contacts during the presentation, I believe there will be questions directed to you afterwards. Uh, yes, and we will continue with uh, another part of the company uh, after the merger. So, so we will have Mr. Lee, General Manager, Aggregate Sales, Metro China, to share the experience of Chinese market in machinery sector. Mr. Lee, the floor is yours. Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. And uh, can you uh, see the screen and before my presentation? Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, first of all, thanks the organizer and uh, Finnish in, uh, machinery industry and uh, invest Meso to present some good story and uh, to colleague from the different industry but uh, from Finland and uh, today I'm going to present is uh, one good uh, example is uh, by multi approach to China aggregate aggregate market and uh, being the number one so and uh, Meso is a global com global leader company for offering equipment and service on mining industry, aggregate industry, recycling industry, and process industry. And uh, regarding the aggregate industry, and the meso in China is from very early stage, that is uh, 1993, we are working on aggregate industry. From now on, it's more than 20 years. But actually, and we have the big growth is in last uh, five years for aggregate business in China. What is the secret or what is a good story for that? So that is a multi approach to China aggregate market. And before my presentation, I'd like to introduce myself. And my name is Li Ziqiang. I'm a general sales manager of aggregate sales of Meso China. And my education is materials engineering and sales. sales. Uh, my working experience, I joined Meso is uh, 1999 September as a marketing officer and then I'm being the key account sales manager and uh, marketing manager from 2001 to 2009. Then I'm working as a general sales manager of Meso Aggregate China from 2009 to now. And uh, during this period and uh, besides the sales job, job uh, also being the team member for Meso acquiring Xiaori for middle market and now also being the Xiaori board member 
and also being the team member for established Liu Gong Meso GV mobile company for China mobile market. So that uh, maybe later on I can leave my contact as well. And uh, like a paper industry and the aggregated industry is one of a uh, very traditional industry. So and before we 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 talking you know strategy for aggregate China and I like sharing some market outlook. And normally we analyze two indicator. One is a fixed property investment. And uh, for the left graph, you can see from the 2007 to 2019, and uh, our fixed property investment is growth, growth, but till 2018 is dropping down a little bit and around 15%. And also, if we seeing the growth, and you can see the right line, and uh, during the between the 2007 to 2009, so the growth is the more than 25 percent. But now as the uh, growth grade is around, uh, you know, and zero around and the last year even dropping down 15 percent. And uh, that is uh, one uh, for indicator for economy. The other is our industry indicator is the cement production because and uh, Cement and need aggregate and to be the concrete. And the cement, China is, uh, how would I like to say, is the biggest uh, production in the world. And one example is uh, the China, three or four years, and the cement production is equal to American 100 years. So that is uh, number one, and being the number one for last uh, almost uh, 30 years. If we analyze uh, the, the, the growth and the production volume from 2007 to 2019, and uh, it's uh, quite similar and with the fixed property investment. And it's growing, but from the 2016 or 2017, and they are keep the almost the same, same figure, it's around the 2.2 two or 2.3 billion ton per year and 2018 is even dropping down five percent but last year is a five percent increase and the both the graph and showing and the china growth and the will and the getting away from the volume growth and the will go to another stage that is a green quality and the technology value so that is uh, create a lot of uh, opportunity and uh, to meso. So that it means maybe the the total potential market is uh, make the decrease a little bit or even keep the stable but uh, available market and to the company like meso is more and more because government is emphasize the quality is not the volume. So that is uh, one slide. Yeah. Okay. And the second is regarding the aggregated industry development. And uh, we can have the two year uh, uh, as, a, as a comparison. One is a 2003, the other is a 2019. And if we're talking about the quarry capacity, and the 2003, and uh, just a few years I joined this uh, metal company, the quarry size is around 100 to 300 ton per hour, the quarry size capacity. But if, if we're talking about the last year, and the more and more quarry is uh, from 1,000 to 3,000 ton per hour, it's around 10 times. And if we're talk, talking about the quarry man license, and uh, 2003 is uh, one year, two year, and I think the maximum is three year, but uh, now it's uh, more than 10 years. It means and uh, if the quarry will be run for more than 10 years, the, invest, the, investor, the investor or the quarry owner have to consider the machine reliability and how long the machine can work in for the quarry. That is the mine license. The third one is the aggregated price. And the 2003 and the 30 RMB per ton, but now, and if we take the example, uh, Shanghai Aries, 
is uh, more than 100, and some areas 120 RMB per ton. What is uh, that meaning? So we can see in and uh, Sweden, Sweden the aggregate price is around seven euro. Seven euro as around uh, well and uh, and the last sixty RMB. So and the China aggregate price even double than the price in Sweden. So and this industry is currently is a really good industry. And uh, talking about the environmental regulation. And 2003, almost nothing, but now and more and more strict. And later on, I will share some photos. So you can see how strict and how is the current, current and uh, China Corey looks like. Competition is more and is harder and harder. And uh, in the 2003, the competitor is a uh, international competitor like Sandwick, Aztec, and so on. But now, and the majority competitor is a local one, and the manganese price is keep same. So that is somehow is related to the service. Is a is a liners, and the, the customer have to change and uh, daily or monthly. So that is a core industry development. By this uh, graph, you can understand how is a development. So here is uh, currently. Corey looks like in China, but the three photo is some is really good photos, but uh, that is uh, representing and the Corey developing trend. And uh, with uh, strict, very strict environmental regulation on the Corey, they are dramatically changing on Corey looks like uh, outlook and the less water usage, the dusting system and housing for crossing and the screening and the loading system concrete landing, concrete land in the quarry. So it will take the time to change all the quarry and the, like the picture left, but and the more and the more quarry looks like that. And also that need a huge investment to acquire, acquiring the quarry license and the more super quarry arising. So regarding the competition, and uh, different from the USA and the Europe and uh, maybe several or several tens and uh, you know competitor in that market area but in China we have let's see maybe 300 maybe 500 competitor majority is from local so we have the different definition for different competitor and the low end market competitor small suppliers and the middle end market is competitor, and uh, that is a lot. And uh, high end market uh, competitor, that is uh, international one. And uh, but in China, that is uh, very complicated. Maybe in Western country, in Europe, if the premier customer like the premier products, they will buy everything from a premier. But in China, even premier customer, they, they will like some key products and from the premier company like Meso, some not that important, you know, products, they will like middle market. So that is a combination. So it's quite a quite a complex, complex. So that is a competition and hard competition from middle in the market. And uh, how Meso to do in last five last five years? And what is um, market driven? Market driven is the environmental policy. Without the environmental policy currently, and the aggregated price cannot be even higher than the aggregate price in Sweden. And because uh, high strict and the environmental policy, it means the company have to uh, invest more money on quarry, on environmental issue, on the machine. So that is uh, market driven, one of. The other is uh, urbanization. China in some region is uh, no big difference with a uh, good city in Europe and uh, in USA. But still our urbanization is only 60%, 60%. Comparing the Nordic country, we have the maybe 20 or 30% 
and uh, room to increase. So, so that is uh, market driven. So general and market driven currently for aggregate is the environmental policy and the urbanization. So what is the op opportunity for us? And because China will have more and more super quarry, government want to control environmental because and the less quarry is easy in control. So they shut down a lot of small and uh, high energy consuming and uh, bad environmental and the quarry, open the th super quarry. So that is the opportunity for meso. And also all the quarry is uh, new quarry and uh, totally new. It's not uh, like a mining company. They need to change one machine. They need the whole production line. So it's a green field and a turnkey opportunity. And also manufacture sand because the sand is uh, as a band to get from the river because the environmental policy again. And the uh, quarry industry is the old industry and the young generation is not really like this job. So they need more and more automation and the process efficiency and even artificial intelligence in this industry and also demolition recycling. So that is a, a lot of opportunity uh, uh, for aggregate in China. But how can Meso approach the, this uh, market? So from 2012, we have the strategy and the multi approach. And we have the premier market for Meso products. And maybe the product from Tianjin Mate and also Finland and France and Brazil or USA. But also the big market, the biggest market is the middle market. So how would like to approach this market? So we acquired uh, the local company Shaori in 2012, uh, 2012. And then in order to, in order to and, uh, promote a mobile crushing market, we also have joint venture with uh, Liu Gong. Liu Gong is one of the biggest uh, construction machinery company in China. And also we're doing some OEM business. So we have the full approach to this opportunity above. At the same time, we will increase the footprint because China is big. And also we have the comparability development because the comparability, some is transferred from European and some have to develop them by the local competing, competing, competing center and also product development. And uh, in Europe, an aggreg aggregate uh, crusher is uh, like a 500 ton power. But in China, with the super quarry, we need a thousand, even bigger machine. So that is somehow we need to uh, develop this kind of machine for China super quarry. So in generally, and we have the full multi approach to current opportunity. So we are going to be the and distribute leader in aggregate market China. And um, the next slide is some graph. You can see quarry number. And the quarry number in 2013 is uh, more than 60, more than 60,000. Yeah, 50, 56,000 and the quarry. But uh, 2008, we only have the 13,000. So almost uh, one fourth. Uh, it means the more and more super quarry need a bigger and a bigger machine. And the se second graph is the market size. Market size is a uh, high end market is green and the middle market is uh, orange and the low end is, uh, is, uh, is uh, dark green. So we can see and the uh, premier market and the slightly increased, but the more bigger and the bigger is the middle market. That is why we have to show it for the middle market. And, uh, and the low end market gets smaller and smaller. And the last, uh, pair, uh, the last uh, graph is the market share. Because before we have the GV and the show rate, our market share is uh, 4%, 5%. But now we increase a lot as uh, 12%.
so by the I would like to see is a really successful strategy and the dual brand and the multi approach for China market and that even during the coronavirus period and uh, this year and aggregate market is still play really really good uh, role in globally so I thinking and that is maybe good reference for all of you and thinking how to approach China market. That is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Li. And I think especially the presented elements regarding the environmental policy structuring in China as well as the growth of middle end market together with metal aggregates multi approach are those things great takeaways for our companies here in Finland when they think about their future regarding the Chinese market. Thank you very much. Next, we will continue and we will have uh, Robert Ding, uh, sales director from Fast Times China, uh, who is going to tell us about the market entry and learnings from Chinese market. Fast Times is a SME from Finland, which has experience very fast development in China lately. So Robert, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you also to Maria for giving me this opportunity. Um, I actually prepared a very short presentation this morning. I was quite busy lately. Uh, before presenting a few words about me too, uh, my name is Robert Dean. I had uh, finished education a long time ago, 20 years ago. I have been working 20 years uh, in Finnish companies and Fastim is my third Finnish employer. Um, I joined Fastim in 2012, 80 years ago. Uh, so I have been doing all the time uh, from very, very uh, almost no business and until today, I clearly see that our business is growing. Uh, I will tell you shortly about our company. First of all, um, we had also long history. We have 100 years of history and we so far have 450 people around the world. And our revenue actually was 100 million euro. Um, then we are doing automation. Our automation is around the machine tools. So our system makes machine work more uh, productively and they can make better quality or maybe not better, but constant quality and save labor. And so far we have 4,000 systems around the world. So that's, uh, it's, it's also a family, a family company. <clears throat> this is something what we do. So um, in the past, machines are work alone. So one operator was working with one machine. With our systems, you can have one operator work with five or even more machines. So save, uh, save labor and a machine can basically run all the time. Just give you some perspective, uh, the, the benefits of uh, automation for machine tools, if machine tool works uh, stand alone, uh, I mean uh, one operator for one machine, the machine spindle is cutting 2000 hours a year. Basically, that's uh, very roughly the, the, the time. Of course, I'm talking about um, uh, the manufacturers in, in, in our area. Our area is, is not in the automotive. For automotive, they have uh, better uh, spindle hours because they have a huge quantity. We are focusing on this kind of production which has small batches but a big variety. For example, aerospace uh, construction machineries, they have a uh, mixed production. They need to have set up a change. So the machine tool, uh, if working standalone, has only 2000 hours cutting. So it's actually very low. And our um, our business idea is 8760. That is the yearly hours. So 365 by 24. So 
that basically saying that with our systems, your machine can run without any stop, even if you have big variety, small batches. So that's something we do. And here are our products or solutions. I can show something which is moving, so it's more sexy. Can you see the the see the screen? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's something we do. Um, so we have, um, for example, if you see the systems here, we have several machines integrated. We have a crane is moving, uh, delivering the parts to the machine. So when machine is 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 uh, free, we will send a new part into the machine. And we have also tool storage. As you know, the machine needs lots of tools for cutting. So uh, we have central storage here. We can have, for example, 2,000 tools built in a central location. Then we have a robot. A robot can send the tools from central tool storage to the machines. So it's, it's really complicated systems. Uh, not only we can integrate uh, with machine tools, but we can also integrate wash machine, a deburring machine. Uh, normally, uh, the process are now a little bit complicated. So when they first do machining, afterwards going to deburring, after deburring, they go to washing, and after washing, they go to CMM for measuring. So we can integrate basically all the devices into into one line. So when a material enter into our system and then come out with ready part. So that's that's something what do we do? We have this kind of stack crane running in the middle. This is one of our solutions. We have also robots and on the ground or, or on the gun train. And we have also AGV. Uh, AGV are basically doing material delivery. So that's something what do we do. Uh, our main competence is something you don't see from this picture. Our core competence is software. So our the, the big differentiation of fast team in Chinese market, we have lots of competition. I mean, really lots. We have Japanese players, we have European players, and we have local players too. But our core competence is the software. That's something you don't see. So our automation is driven, is, is, is software driven. That gives the possibility of our customers who could have data driven production. And this is something uh, which many customers in China value. So they have uh, lots of data in their systems. They, they, they know all the visibilities, what is coming, what we have produced, how is the machine utilization, what the, the things I should prepare next hour. So we have really comprehensive, a very advanced software, which make your production under control. So in my opinion, I'm, I'm very positive about, uh, about our business in next five to 10 years. Um, of course, this depends also how we do. As, as, as you all know, we are also small, medium sized company. There's a lot we should do. Uh, I will come back also later on about my opinion. Um, this is our industry. So as I said, we are focusing on this industry, which has a uh, big variety uh, and small batches. For example, aerospace, they produce only one piece, but they have 10, uh, they, they have more than 20 or more than 100 different pieces producing in one line. Um, we have achieved pretty much. I, I'm, I, I can proudly assure you that we, we, we achieved a lot in, in past few years. Uh, the real automation um, start, in my opinion, from year 2015. I joined Fast in 2012, so I had very difficult time in the very first beginning, but I saw the future. I believed in the future. Uh, of course, the, the 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 bigger belief is China, is our is is made in China. I believe made in China will be very very um, valuable brand in my opinion. I believe in made in China, and this motivates me to to do 
lots of work to to in a way to understand the offering, understand the market, and of, of course uh, try to do a lot of uh, um, you know marketing work as well. Uh, we, for example, we we published our white paper about uh, FMS, that is uh, flexible manufacturing systems. I did a lot of work, so we we at, I I believe fast team is where well positioning in China. I visited hundreds of end users and to, to sell the idea of FMS. Uh, as I said in the first beginning, it was really hard, very tough. People don't know. Uh, we ha- they always question me, come on, we have so many varieties. We have small batches. How could you sell as automation? Nobody knew there's automation solution there for a long time. Even if we have small volume, even if we have big a big variety, it's no problem, we can do that. So there's a lot of time to, to engage customer, to educate them, and then finally establish relationship with them. This takes really long, long time. But I, I think we have now very good installed base and we can continue to do more. Uh, that is for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm rather confident about that. We are expanding our sales team here we are expanding our service team here. We are a little bit slow, as as I think Grace said in the very first beginning. Finnish companies are normally very slow, and it's very typical for. Uh, I'm, fasting is not e- e- exception. Very slow. Even I said many years ago, we should do this and we should do that. We can't wait until then, but it's 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 a slow. And also for your information, you can see the, the installation in China map and our, our systems are mainly in the east coast. That's more or less telling you uh, the economy of China. <clears throat> okay, uh, so much for me and for the fast team introduction um, for market entry. Um, I don't think I can tell you anything you don't know and I don't know what you don't know. Um, I can only share you really my experience. As I told you, I have 20 years in Finnish companies, uh, uh, in, in small and big, and and for the moment, uh, Fastim is also not that big. So even though we have 450 people. So first, I try to address this in, in two levels. Uh, first level is, is, is kind of a macro level, understanding China. And and the second level is 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 an, uh, from op- operational level how how you do in China. Uh, this is really complicated, and I think it's very difficult how to understand China. Um, China is is changing um, rapidly. Uh, this 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 uh, speed will continue, I believe so. And and um, it's so big market, it's so complex, and it's so different in culture, in language. And um, these couple of years, uh, China-US trade war or technology war um, disrupted China a lot. I think disrupted the whole world. And this kind of trade war between US and China even put Europe in difficult situation. For us, we have also some 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 real effect or, or impact on business. For example, for military, uh, we are very careful uh probably we couldn't sell to military but if you look at today the economy uh i think china will develop more military um military i mean aecc or avic if you know what i'm talking about so chinese aircraft and chinese air engine will continue to invest and this soe is it's it's state owned enterprise are immune from economic cycle so they will continue to invest. So we have a little bit trouble there. We 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 need to feed back our headquarters what this customer is producing. If it's missile, if it's uh, you know weapons, we can sell. So it's it's um, uh, complicated. And to have real real understanding about China for SME from Finland, it's it's really really difficult. Even for Chinese to 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 tell what China going to be, how the market it is, it's 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 really difficult. 
So, um, but anyway, you have to do the homework. I think that the Grace have uh, very good point, three recommendations. First is readiness. You have to do the homework. You have to do how is your technology? How is your solution? How is your products or services? How competitive you are? You normally, you, you need to have clear competitive edge. And then you have to think how long, how many years your competitive edge is going to sustain if 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 it's not that ahead of competition, don't come to China. It's 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 difficult. Uh, so so really think about your competitive edge and how long you can you can keep that uh, um, competence, how long you can keep that edge. It's it's really, really important. And also um, if we talk generally, uh, Chinese customers, particularly industrial customers, are still, uh, in a way, price sensitive, and they care. Um, of course, they start to care value. For example, fast to can sell uh, rather expensive systems in China, two million or more than two million, can be three million euro for one line to a private company. It's 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 really impressive. I I I have to say, so customers are caring about value. But most of the customers still care a lot about price and, and then delivery time. How long is the delivery time? Most of the time, Chinese company can't wait. And we have really, really long delivery time. I have been talking with my headquarters many, many times. We should localize our part. We should be really um, thinking about Chinese lo uh, locality. People can't wait. And our delivery time is is far too long, so we we lost some opportunity because our our delivery time is ten months. So it's for 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 some company they think that's unbelievable. How could we we wait for ten years? We ship from Finland, and then one point five a month on the sea, and then two weeks clearance and one month installation, and another one month for commissioning and trial running. So this is. We have lots of uh, issues, in my opinion, also in China. Also think about yours. How 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 is your price? How competitive you are? How is your technology? Do you have some, um, does China have alternative technology which might disrupt yours? I think China is not like before. Um, China is, is, is uh, developing its own technology and we all know there's no way we can get uh, more advanced if we don't have our own technology. In the past, we don't have to we just copy uh, or use the, the ready uh, technology from, from, from Western world. But from now on, nobody gives you any new technology. And China has to develop its own, have to upgrade its, its, its manufacturing process. I think this is the only way China could get out of middle income trap. So, so Think about your your technology. Are you helping China? Um, for for example, how complicated it is to do business in China. This is uh, maybe the last year figure or even older, uh, ranked 46. Um, but as you all today heard from Grace, that China is opening more, so things could be getting easier also in the future. That might help. Uh, at least from a uh, uh, practicality point of view. <clears throat> and then since uh, all the audience are from uh, machinery, I think you know this made in China strategy 2025. We have identified basically 10 industries or sectors which were given be given priorities. So we have 20, 25, 35 and 45. So China wants to and into the kind of uh, uh, not manufacturing uh, quantity, but really power to be to be the leading level among manufacturing powers in 2045. So, and and uh, for for fast teams, uh, it's it's clearly um, opportunity because we can really help. Chinese machining or metal cutting industry. We are focused on metal cutting, small batches, but big, a big variety metal cutting industry to get more productivity, to save labor, 
and, and to really be more competitive. <clears throat> also worth mentioning is China is, is getting old very quickly. So if, 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 if you are helping uh, Chinese manufacturing saving labor, that is very good in my opinion. This, is, this slide actually I, I, I uh, copied from uh, uh, one Finnish FBCS event, understanding Chinese, understanding the future. So it's, um, it's, it's in a way I, I somehow believe that. So for all the SMEs you plan to come to China, it's, it's really necessary and, and, and it's very, very critical. You do all the analysis, uh, try to do a lot of um, feasibility study, understanding the market and, and a match with your technology. How could you compete? Is there really, really a um, uh, future for you? Otherwise, maybe you don't do it. Uh, it's, it's because anyway, doing business in China is very, very, very challenging and, and complicated. Uh, I understood from Grace, he mentioned one bidding uh, project that uh, the Finnish company last for us, for fasting, that's very normal, nothing new. I spent two years, for example, in Tendo aircraft. I was doing a lot there. I had meaningful impact on the company and I made basically the specification for them. So the bidding specifications are from me, but I didn't get there. So last year, somebody else took the away. For, for us, it's nothing new. That's very common. So for SOE, for the state owned companies, you can't win even if you have very advanced technology, even your price level is okay. Doesn't guarantee that you can, you, you can win. So for SOE, steer the relationships and, 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 and price counting more important than, than your real technology, your real solution. So really be prepared and, and challenges you can face in China. And then, okay, um, if from from uh, operational level, if you decide to come to China, that's very good. But but you you make sure you have done strategic analysis and you want to come to China, because if that is done, then you don't have to hesitate. You don't have to you know worry about you. Just do your work. So the first thing is really the the talents to get right talents, that's also very, very difficult in my opinion, very difficult. We are hiring people, I know how difficult it is, not only from language point of view, but there are lots of things you have to consider. Of course, uh, you have Finch here, Finch can help you to, to find the talents. Uh, Finch is, is, is very fast and also professional in this regard. Finch can also recommend you, in my opinion, actually recommendation can be even better because recommendation normally you understand the person, know the person, and, and that person is in the industry you are working, you are working on. That could be actually better. So really find talents that have right people on the bus is really the first step. Otherwise, you 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 have a wrong person, you train him for two years, and then nothing comes, or the, the guy just simply leaves the company. That's a huge waste for SME. So find right talents, really put time there, understanding the person, try to ask questions from different angles. So this is really something for SME, you should be very, very careful. But time is money. And, and also the, the, the resources you put on this is, is, is really critical. Okay, then if, if, if you have right people, that's very good. Then it's really about how to how to support him, how to make him win. Um, in my opinion, um, SME from Finland are not doing that good job. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I, I say this way. Um, that's really from my experience. Um, support is not uh, sufficient, uh, in my opinion. And then uh, response is a bit too slow. Uh, of course, uh, Grace covered it very well that uh, we should catch up with opportunity. But I also understand from Finland side because I had finished education as well. It's not so easy just to say yes or no. But but uh, if, if you really want to come to China, you have to respond quickly. That's something you have to do. Uh, the communication, in my opinion, is the key. Um, 
if you have a guy, Chinese guy working for you in China, most of the time he might be alone because for SME you can't hire too many people at once, just a couple of guys. So keep regular and meaningful communication with him is extremely important. I mean, that person sitting in Finland supporting him, normally uh, I think Finnish company came to China has kind of technology which is a little bit complicated or advanced or solution which could be complicated. The support is always needed. So the communication is really important, not all the time really talking about projects, but asking the person working here in China, how do you feel? Uh, and, and kind of some, some small talks, it's really helpful. So the guy understand, okay, my headquarters cares about me. My headquarters really cares about markets. So, so this kind of uh, constant communication is missing, in my opinion, in my previous uh, job. Of course, I I can phone back, you know, I, but not many people can can phone back easily, or Chinese can be can be feeling difficult in in in, in phoning back, especially in the first beginning, because there's so many things he didn't know. He can't make always make phones to ask this and that. It's also challenging, and and our, our culture. Uh, our behaviors are different from 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 Finnish people, so really the, the active uh, care, active uh, communication from that guy supporting Chinese operation is very very crucial. I could say he is a person who either break China or make China. I I, I really had in my own experience when I was working for fast teams. I was lucky I got good guys supporting me. So, so I could come up rather quickly, understanding comprehensive offering. We have so many, so many details, mechanical, electrical, and software. There's so many things to learn. So that guy uh, phoned me often and travel with me often, and we 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 really really fit together. So that is really really important. So the communication, in my opinion, is really the key. It's it's easy to say. But it's difficult to do. It's 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 not so easy to to do that. And then okay, you have the right people here, and and you do really the support, uh, uh, and you respond quickly. You have good communication with your guys, and then for long term success, I think, um, of course, how to retain that guy, develop that guy, train the guy. This will be endless, and and then localization is also the key, in my opinion, for long term success. So it's 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 constant job, it's endless job, and and markets are changing, and and your strategy has to also adapt con uh, constantly. So I I try to I think time is running running out. I try to be short. So really do your work, uh, strategic thinking about China, thinking from five to ten years time in my opinion at least. Otherwise it won't make any sense. Be sure if you come to China. Then have right people. Support is really, really the key. Support. If if support is insuff insufficient, you can't win in China at all. I'm I'm very sure. So and and then try to clo get close to customer. Try to really close uh, communicate with customers, understanding customer needs. I think localization probably is 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 the thing you have to do someday to to keep long term success. So thank you very much for your for your attention. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. And I think it's uh, it has been a lot of practical takeaways for us, and especially the reminder that there's no quick money in the Chinese market. You need to have constantly developing and also investing into that. Uh, I think many of our speakers has been talking about close your being close to your customer today. So, uh, in the last presentation, uh, we will have Joanne Zhang, uh, general manager of Shanghai Finchi Innovation Center, where, who will actually tell us what are the services of Finchi Innovation Center as a soft landing place for the Finnish companies. Uh, in the way of trying trying the market entry. So, Joanne, uh, the floor is yours.
Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. And uh, thank you for organizing this event. And I'm very honored to give the introduction about Finchi, how we help the Finnish companies for them to enter the China market. And hopefully after my presentations, then you will think our platform will also be helpful for your companies in the machinery industries to enter in the China market. So, uh, in, in short, it's a Shanghai Finland China Innovation Center, uh, which was est established by the Finnish Ministry of Trade and Industry in 2005. And also, we are uh, and also we are the daughter company of Business Finland and a member of Team Finland Operations here in China. But uh, even though we are more like a soft landing platform for the Finnish companies, but we registered as a wholly owned foreign company belonging to Business Finland, so that we can also share the experience, like really daily to daily basis business with the Finnish companies when they come to China from day one. And also, uh, since we have been here for many years and uh, we have been helped so many Finnish companies for them to do the business here, uh, we got the license as the innovative incubator by the Shanghai government and Pudong New District. So that if the companies, like the Finnish companies, they register their own legal entity here in Finchi, we can also help them to apply for the uh, subsidies from local government so that can also like uh, sh share the burden for the Finnish companies to do the business here. And also we are part of the accredited soft landing zone from Enrich to as kind of the certifications for Finchy to help the Finnish companies. So since we were established in 2005, we have been helping over 130 Finnish companies for their business in China. So in Finchy platform, what we offer is first the office space, and then the most valuable is our soft landing services and also the Finnish community here. Uh, we have the office space of, of about 1,900 square meters located in the Shanghai Zhangjiang Hightech Park, which is also part, uh, part of the free trade zone area. We have different type of office space and also the original Finnish sauna here as the image of Finland culture. But most importantly, we also share the same office space with Business Finland Shanghai office, Finnish Business Council Shanghai, so that really the uh, Finnish companies here can interact with other, can also interact with other uh, advisors from the Business Finland or from other Finnish uh, institutes to work together uh, towards the business development in China. And our core value lies in our services. We have divided our services into different levels. First, we have the virtual office service for the Finnish companies to kick off their business in China, uh, which means for, for the Finnish companies, maybe uh, you just want to start with a point where there will be personnel to representing you to promote your uh, Finnish offerings to the China market to show that you have a contact point in China and to expand your geography coverage in the world. So this is what we offer as a a virtual office services and especially during the pandemic situation nowadays we found it's really helpful for the Finnish companies because now uh, they cannot come to China due to the uh, visa issues but then we can represent them to approach their customers to take care of their daily operations and even there will be some disputes then we can also uh, uh, representing the Finnish companies to uh, negotiate with their partners or customers here. But of course, um, during certain period or at certain stage, the, you, the Finnish company, you, you need to have your own operations here. So at that time, what we offer is the soft landing platform, uh, it's more what we call the soft landing services. And this is also the biggest difference between Finchi and other like uh, incubators in the market. So what we offer for the Finnish companies is you can come to Finchi to start your teams, start your business development, start operations, but you don't need to register your own company during the first maybe two years or even longer period because it's easy for you to register a company here, but then it's very difficult for you to deregister your company. And as many speakers before mentioned, you have to make the right strategy for your China plan. So it's very important that you can have the first few years to and to make your strategy first, and then you can decide what will be the right business model, what is the right company type you plan to register in China. And then, 
So in the software learning services, what we offer is like a wallet care service so that uh, for the Finnish companies, we can, even though you are not registered as a company here, you cannot arrange the, at a, you cannot open your own bank account. Then we can do all the cashier services on behalf of the Finnish company to pay the money to your local vendors to support your day, uh, local operations. And also, as Robert mentioned, we have the staff founder services to help the Finnish companies to recruit the right talent. Uh, because we have been helping the Finnish companies for so many years, we understand uh, the Finnish culture and what kind of person the Finnish company is looking for. So based on our understanding, we will try to find the right people for the Finnish companies. And, and also through the years of development, we found that it's very important to find the right a person for the right talent for the Finnish companies, especially nowadays if we are talking about business, which is we have to have different relationships with different stakeholders, then how to find the right uh, talent or the sales director or sales manager in the in the in these uh, in that specific industries with the networks is very important. And also once uh, the uh, the talent is found, then we also have the HR solutions so that we can recruit this employee on behalf of the Finnish companies so that they can have their own HR, T, uh, HR operations here with their own team here. And uh, some of the Finnish companies, they will also to relocate the Finnish expat to be here to, to act as the uh, representative of that Finnish company here. Then we also offer the visa solutions, housing, schooling, so that they can uh, adjust their life in Shanghai very smoothly. And uh, nowadays, we also try to work out if there's any possibilities, uh, how to uh, like facilitate the visa applications nowadays, considering this uh, current situation, which we are also following closely for our Finnish companies. And also, we have the logistic support by uh, with the import and export by cooperating with the local partners here, which we are more like the a liaison office to uh, to coordinate between both between Finland and China. Uh, in addition to the soft landing services, we also have the value added services, which is uh, mainly based on project uh, basis of the Finnish company's needs. We have the business credit report so that we can help the Finnish companies to do the background check for the uh, for the uh, for the their Chinese partners or their Chinese customers so that. Uh, in the report, the Finnish company can find the shareholder information, the legal, uh, the legal structures, the financial report of the company in the past two to three years, the main downstream, upstream customers or partners of that company, so that we can help the Finnish company to make a better judgment if they need to do the business with that Chinese partner or how they should cooperate with that Chinese partner. And also, uh, we also have the company registration and manufacturing establishment service for the Finnish companies if they plan to register in China. And also, if they register in Finnish, we are also providing the accounting and tax compliance service for them. And also, we see some of the Finnish companies, they might need to find the local partners for their, uh, maybe for their service renderings or for their uh, production corporations. Then we also do the partner search for the Finnish companies. And also, if needed, we also do the like events arrangement, visits arrangement based on specific needs from Finnish companies. So we are more like one-stop solution for the Finnish company. If you need anything, you just contact us, then we will try to offer our tailor-made services for you. And also just try to mention again, what because we are the licensed incubator here, so we can also help the Finnish companies once they register in Finchi, we can help them to apply for subsidies from the local government. And nowadays we have helped, I think, uh, nearly 10 Finnish companies for them to get the subsidies especially the rent subsidies from the local government since 2016. So I think it could be a good way for the Finnish companies to also get the local resource or the local support from the local government, which is, seems to be quite remote or unavailable for the Finnish companies in the past years. So in addition to the Finnish uh, to our services, then we are also trying to create a Finchy community here uh, with the advisors from Business Finland Shanghai office, from Finnish Business Council, and also we are part of the, uh, we are also closely working with the Zhangjiang High Tech Park, which is one of the uh, first uh, first state level science parks, and also with the uh, Pudong Science and Technology Community, so that in together we try to create an ecosystem for the Finnish companies to start business here. 
And also, uh, and also one thing to mention is because what we support is mainly the SMEs, the small and medium sized companies. And uh, as Robert mentioned, uh, finish, uh, small SMEs, they cannot afford to build a big team here. So usually they just will hire, start with one or two employees. So in Finchy, they can more feel like we are all a total family here. We support with each other. We share resources with each other so that the Finnish company here, they will not feel alone. We are more like working together to make a win-win-win solution for all of us. And here is like Finchy chronology from 2005 to 2019. And these are the companies which we have helped for their uh, operations in China. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, for the Finnish companies, usually it takes um, around two to four years for them to uh, grow in China. And some of them maybe even take longer time. But uh, we see uh, most of the Finnish companies, they still manage to succeed in the China market with the right talents and the right business model. And uh, uh, because of the time, I'd just like to share one success story with you. But as Robert mentioned, actually Fastum is also doing quite well now. It's, it's kind of, it's also one of the success stories of Finchy, but Robert already made their, made his introduction. So I will talk about another company, it's called BMH Technology. Uh, they are a clean tech company, but also they uh, provide the whole crashing machine solutions for like crash the uh, solid waste into usable fuels. So their target customers is like power plant clean industries. So they joined Finch in 2012. At that time, they set up their sales office here, but with no legal entity. So uh, they are the first a foreign company to bring the SRF solid reusable fuel concept to the Chinese market. And also uh, they joined at that time's FinPro Business Business Finland Clean Tech program. So they can also access to some big players in the market. And the, they have built up their own sales team here. We help them to uh, recruit the first local Chinese employees, the sales engineer at that time. And so they do the marketings and they also developed the China specific uh, T88 shredders for the China, China market. So in, of course, it takes years for them to educate market to understand their offerings. So in 2014, they, uh, they won their first project, their first T their first T88 shredder baseline sold in 2014. And they also expand their local uh, team here. And they also try to see if they can uh, set up their own companies. So they start to do the feasibility studies. And also in 2015, they already sold four, uh, four um, lines to the Chinese customers. In 2016, so they have uh, set up their uh, wholly foreign owned enterprise here. And then they have also a bigger team here. They have a team of about 10 people, including all the functions uh, from sales, sourcing, logistics, uh, uh, after sales service team. And uh, um, I'm proud to say that all the team members, all the local Chinese employees were recruited or headhunted by Finchi. So we helped them to set up their whole, whole team here. And last year they have um, like uh, realize that the lo purely like it's purely local operation here. So now like their general manager is also a Chinese uh, lady. So now they realize that the local operations of their of their China of their China team here to to better support their business and projects here in China. So here this is the slide about current Finch clients. Now we have around 36 Finnish companies with us. Um, two thirds of the Finnish companies, they have their own office here with their own employees. And uh, one third of the companies actually they're using our virtual office services, which, is, which means we will offer the contact point here for them. And also from time to time, we will act at their Chinese representatives to be in contact with their uh, customers in China. So this is like the brief introduction about Finchi. We try to provide a fast, safe and trusted platform for the Finnish companies to start the business in China without the need to register their own companies. And meanwhile, meanwhile, they can enjoy the ecosystem created here as a Finnish community to support their business in China. And here you can find my contact. If you have any questions uh, later on, you can also feel free to contact me uh, to to ask anything about the China or need any help, we can we are more than happy to help. Thank you, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. And I believe.
for any company who are thinking about joining Chinese market, Finchi can be one of the first steps for you to contact. Uh, I think we are running out of time. So uh, actually, on my behalf, thanks very much for our co-organizers, uh, Business Finland, uh, Finnish Business Council in Shanghai, as well as Virma Lappelanta. And it has been a very fruitful session. Uh, thank you very much to our great speakers. And also thanks for all the participants who has been uh, with us today uh, in the webinar. And uh, we will share the record of the session later on. So uh, since there have been some overlapping timetable schedules for many, uh, they will have a chance also to get, uh, get into the uh, knowledge what we have shared today. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to raise hand. I think we can still extend the webinar for a couple of minutes. And if no, I would very much like to thank you all for being here with us. Okay, so thank you very much and looking forward to talk to you soon again. And this will be the end of the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you.